We live in a world of smoke and mirrors, a world completely upside down, and a world where truth is presented as lies and lies are presented as truth. The recent US presidential election has demonstrated this in so many ways. First of all, the impeachment of Donald Trump, where Democrats said he incited violence by asking protesters to walk peacefully in protest at the fact that nobody would look at the streams of evidence that this election was not all that it seemed. He didn't incite violence at all, but the Democrats did. The Democrats have applauded Black Lives Matter violence across the country for months and months and even helped fundraise to get them out of prison. There was no backlash against them. The press didn't cover it, even though they were actually inciting violence and Trump wasn't. The press presented it as the other way round. They presented facts as lies and lies as facts. Now we have Joe Biden in the White House and the press are absolutely loving it. He is going to sign up back up to the World Health Organization, for example. Now, the World Health Organization helped China to lie about the coronavirus pandemic and said that it couldn't transmit from human to human. This stopped any action being taken on this until it was far too late and it had spread all around the world. The World Health Organization is a liability. It is a political monster which sides with China against the United States and any other democracy repeatedly. Now it's we're supposed to celebrate the fact that this organization, which lied for China, now has America back in. Biden has also signed up to the climate change lie. There is a environmental problem on this planet. It's a problem of pollution. And it is largely at the feet of China. But nobody says so. There is no penalty for China for polluting the way it does. There's no penalty for them for opening coal station after coal station. It's only Western countries who are already taxing their people to, into oblivion to pay for wind farms and solar panels that don't work. And to build a wind farm, you have to, guess what, use electricity. And guess what that's generated from? Trees. The whole thing is a scam, a lie, that Biden has now signed America up to again. And meanwhile, the real environmental problem of pollution is ignored because China is at the forefront of it. Then we have the trans agenda. We, are, we already know that Biden is promising that men, people with male genitalia, male DNA, male bodies, will be allowed to self-identify and walk into women's toilets, women's dressing rooms, women's refuges, women's shelters, wherever they like, regardless of the threat this may pose to the safety of actual women. Again, we are told that we have to accept that a human being who was born male, who has male genitalia, can simply call himself female, and he's female. That's the size of the lie that is now being accepted and promoted from the White House. And the press is celebrating it. Now he has changed the Oval Office. He's changed the busts in the Oval Office. And he's removed Winston Churchill from it. Donald Trump, Churchill has been sitting in the Oval Office for decades. Barack Obama took him out. Donald Trump put him back. Now Biden has taken him out again. He has replaced him with other busts, including those of Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. Now, I have no problem whatsoever with busts of Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks being in the Oval Office. I actually think they should be there. But the problem that Biden has got is that they were calling for racial equality at a time when black people were horrifically discriminated against, segregated and basically appallingly treated in the United States. They were fighting, in other words, a just cause. But he has not done this to reflect on the just cause they were fighting. If busts, 
If he was putting Bust in the Oval Office to reflect those who have fought just causes, he would not have taken Churchill's out. Churchill stood up to Hitler when the rest of Europe had fallen. That deserves some credit, I would think. And this isn't hundreds of years ago. It's only last century. He's not doing this for any other reason than to stir up racial division and racial hatred. The very thing he says he's going to oppose. Biden has already said that he's going to offer economic assistance to black and Asian or basically non-white businesses in the United States. Why non-white? Why not everyone who is struggling in the United States? Why not help everyone? Why does he have to name people by colour? The reason he's putting Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King in and taking Churchill out is not because of their achievements or their just causes. It is to bow down to Black Lives Matter, a group that wants to divide America along racial lines, wants to stir up racial separation and wants to turn black against white. That is their aim, to destabilize America along racial lines. Biden said he would bring America together. In snobbing Churchill and bringing in black civil rights leaders, he could have kept all of them. He is doing exactly the opposite of bringing America together. This is an anti-white snob. This is a racial division promotion. That is what he is doing, and it's what he'll continue to do in his time in the White House. Bringing America together means forgetting about the colour and appreciating the people and what they have achieved, the just cause they actually fought. That's the opposite of what he is doing. Martin Luther King said that a person should be judged not on the colour of their skin, but on the content of their character. Black Lives Matter, Joe Biden, the exact opposite. They are emphasising a person's colour and forgetting about their character and forgetting about the just cause, causes they fought and forgetting about their legacy in history to stand up to tyranny. Joe Biden has no intention of representing those who stand up to tyranny. This is a game. This is a... Yes... This is what communists do. They divide, they categorize people and turn them against each other. And he is bearing down to an openly communist group in Black Lives Matter. He's signing up to all the world organizations, all the globalist bodies, all of which oppose the independence and autonomy of the United States. That is not what the United States was meant to be about. It was meant to be a democracy. And he had the gall to say that democracy had prevailed in his acceptance speech. If he is so certain that democracy had prevailed, why doesn't he prove Donald Trump wrong and prove that he did legitimately win all of those votes? I would, if I were him, I would have wanted a recount in all those swing states just to shut Donald Trump up. But he didn't. And he won't. Because he has no intention of honouring democracy or the Constitution. And his first few days in office show that. He is bowing down to identity politics in his very first days. He is dividing America along racial lines. This is not what he said he would do. This is not what the US president should do. And it's certainly not what one ought to do if you want to bring a country together. It's the opposite. God help America.